following program is sponsored by Open Way Church in Cyprus. This is Walking Closely with God, a prayer ministry broadcast outreach of Open Way Church located in Bridgeland, Cyprus, Texas. Please stay tuned as Pastor Greg brings you biblical teaching from the Word of God, giving you clear understanding to help guide and empower you in your close walk with God. At the same time, teaches you to pray effectual prayers that bring answers and solutions to stubborn issues of life. The power of the Word is unveiled. As you stand on it by faith, you then start experiencing manifestations of the promises that enhances a purpose-driven life in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome to Walking Closely with God. We're still on the faith series. This week, the title of the message is Heart Condition. Heart Condition. Our heart has been designed by God to be filled with love. And so scripture tells us in Romans 5 verse 5, Amplified Version, such hope in God's promises never disappoints us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given who he has given to us. So this is the heart posture of a regenerated man or woman for with the heart we believed and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So by daily meditating on God's word, we develop a deep and passionate love for God for it is written, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Then you shall also love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. This was God's original design for the heart. But then the devil through sin deception, twisted and distorted this design. Now the heart, which is supposed to be a place of purity, filled with love, compassion, kindness, gentleness, peace, and joy, is now a place filled with bitterness, anger, resentment, rage, unforgiveness, and all forms of evil thought. So God himself declared concerning the heart, it is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know the state of a man's heart except the man and God? But God in his everlasting mercy wasn't ready to give up on man because everything about our faith work as believers is a function of the heart. And since the state of a man's heart is critically important to God, God came up with a new plan saying, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone, the heart of bitterness, of resentment, of rage, of evil thoughts from your flesh, from your mortal body. And I will give you a heart of flesh that is soft, that is moldable, that is yielded to me. I will give you that heart because God wants us to live for him, trusting in him and standing on the promises of his words for us. Amen. That is his design. That is his plan and mandate for man. In the Bible, Thomas doubted. He didn't believe Jesus had arisen from the dead. Thomas actually was speaking from the abundance of his heart. Because scripture tells us from out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So Jesus wasn't pleased with him and told him, listen, Thomas, because you see me, now you believe. But blessed are those who haven't seen, yet they believe. Our belief system is so paramount. And that is why God is always doing a work in our heart. Because his, the heart he has designed to be filled with love, to be filled with trust, confident faith in him. Abraham believed God and it was credited for him for righteousness and called a friend of God because his heart was conditioned towards God. His heart was conditioned towards God. As a matter of fact, when he was going to make the sacrifice, his son Isaac asked him, where is the lamb? Because Isaac was used to seeing his father offer sacrifices unto God. He knew the process. 
And Abraham rightly answered and told him, God will provide a sheep for the bond offering, my son. And because Abraham trusted El Shaddai, the modern enough God, God did not disappoint and came true for Abraham. So you and I, we have the power to create and become the person we want to be when our hearts are conditioned right. But we must summon the discipline, the dedication and determination to succeed and fulfill the dreams, the goals and the destiny that God has ordained for our lives. We can and we must summon strength to persevere through the hardest and toughest of times of life because our destiny is glorious and it is calling. So, scripture tells us in Proverbs 18.21, I'll be reading from the Amplified, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. What is this scripture telling us? When you speak life and you speak positively into situations, they bring forth fruits that are alive. You see things around your life growing, becoming, you know, what you are speaking. But when you are speaking negatively, you are speaking death into situations and you are even calling forth and naming situation that Satan is presenting to you, these are things you see manifesting all around your life. So you must speak with your mouth what you want to see manifested in your life by faith because your heart is conditioned to go towards life as God said and ordained in his word for you. Your faith in God and his word is backed up by your works. So you must go about bringing to pass what you are declaring. Living a disciplined, dedicated, and determined life to succeed, to bring to pass the destiny that God has for you. So according to his divine plan, God had made the heavens for himself, but the earth has he given to sons of man. So we see a shared dominion. It means for anything to happen on earth realm, there has to be a union between God and man. And man, for God has chosen man in a a participatory role for what happens on earth. So you play your role, God plays his role, and then we see manifestation of what we are trusting and believing God for. Unfortunately, Some are ignoring their own role, hoping that God will make everything happen. No, it doesn't work like that. That is why it is said, faith without works is dead. And so this is the explanation and frustration of some believers that are backsliding and going back to their old ways. It is not the will of God for any man to... So God doesn't want us to go back to, you know our old ways, regardless of what we're confronted with. You know, when the 12 spies went to spy out the land, they came back with evil reports, 10 of them. But Caleb silenced every one of them before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb was undaunted by the fact that there were giants in the land. His confidence was in the fact that God, who is not a man that he should lie, had given them the land. All they had to do was their own participatory role to just go and possess it. Go and possess the land. Same thing with Jacob. He was conditioned. His heart was conditioned to be blessed. So he wrestled all night with the angel. Then the angel finally said, please let me go for the day is breaking. Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. His heart was conditioned on receiving a blessing and he got a transgenerational blessing. David said to the Philistine, the Goliath, he said, thou comest 
to me with a sword, with a spear and a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. David was not looking at the size of Goliath. He was looking at the God he served. And because he made that declaration with a conditioned heart that God will come through for him, he ran towards the problem. He ran towards Goliath. He ran towards the giant. And God came through for him. Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it might not grieve me. And God granted to him that which he requested. So we see there are categories of blessings. There are the blessings called the commanded blessings, the category of blessings of indeed, there are the category of blessings of in the city, there are the categories of blessing of chasing you and overtaking you, there are the categories of blessings of coming in and going out. So it depends on what category you are asking God for a blessing, he will release it to you, but your heart you must have it settled in your heart that this God has never failed and he won't start with you. God granted to Jabez what he asked. The people, they were confronted with the Red Sea and with the Egyptian hotly pursuing them. But Moses, from a place of intimate relationship with God, he declared to the people, fear not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptian whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. But it did not end there. They had to do their own path. They had to play their own role. They had to move forward. They had to go forward into the Red Sea. And God said to Moses, stretch forth thy rod. And as Moses did that, the sea parted. The sea made a way for them where there seemed to be no way. And the same sea that parted for them was the same sea that swallowed up their enemies. So, my brother and my sister, what is confronting you? What is that challenge that is confronting you? What is that situation you are presently, you know, going through? The challenge, the crisis or whatever it is you are going. Is it health crisis? Is it marital crisis? Is it financial crisis? What is it? Because when you condition your heart towards God, towards his faithfulness, towards his goodness, God will come through for you. And this is what Jeb, I mean, uh, Job did. Job said, though he slay me, though I don't understand all of this happening in my life, I've lost all my children. I've lost my wealth. I am infirmed with this disease. I know this God. He is faithful. I trust him. My heart is condition it is said to already in my heart that this god i will maintain my own ways before him i will still live for him i will still worship him i will still exhort him i will still lift him up in my life though i don't understand all of this crisis going on though i don't know where they are coming from but yet i will play my own participatory role I will still live for God. I will trust him. I will honor him. The wife said at a point, why don't you curse God and die? And Job's response was mind-blowing. He said, will I take the good and not the evil? So wherever you are, God, God, let him be God. Let him remain God. He's too faithful to fail. He's too faithful to fail. He says, you know, that whatever it is you want, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will answer you. And I will what? I will deliver you. And you would what? You will praise me. You will praise me. You will honor me. I will deliver you. 
you will know that I am God. I will deliver you. You will know that there is no other. I will deliver you. You will know that I alone, I am he that called you. What is that situation? What is that challenge you are presently going through, my brother and my sister? Go to God because as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Whatever you are thinking, so you would your your actions will follow. So your lifestyle will follow. But you want to learn to lean on God. You want to learn to trust in God. You want to learn to let God be God. Let God be God in your life. Amen. Don't look at your circumstances. These are all, you know, devices of the enemy to get you to begin to doubt God, to get you to begin to fear. And when you begin to operate in fear, your faith is outside the window. Trust God. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I will maintain my ways. I will play my own role. So I pray for you today that from his glorious and unlimited resources, God will empower you with inner strength through his spirit so that your heart is conditioned and in a place in a posture that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith and that everything that represents love for God will be rooted and established in your heart because that is God's original plan for you, that you be rooted and established in love, that your heart will be yielded, your heart will be humbled before him that he who reign will rule and will be God in your life. Amen. This is the purpose and plan for God that he will have first place in your life. That everything about your life will radiate love for him. Intimate love. Intimate love. And love for God comes from a place of knowledge. So Ephesians 1.16 tells us, he said, I do not cease to give thanks on your behalf, remembering you in my prayers. I always pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation to give you a deep and personal, intimate insight into a true knowledge of who he is. So what is Paul telling us? He said, knowing God and loving God walk hand in hand. If you don't truly know God, you cannot truly love God. So you must have a personal and intimate, deep knowledge of God. And when you do that, you know God for who God is, then by default, your heart will be filled with love for God because they that know their God will be strong and they will do exploit. Daniel knew God. He was strong and he did exploit. David knew God. He was strong and he did exploit. Joseph knew God. He was strong and he did exploit. Joshua knew God. He was strong and he did exploit. God even told him, he said, listen, Joshua, meditate day and night on my word. When you do that, then you will have good success because you doing that gives you a deep knowledge of who I am. And in knowing me, I reveal mysteries to you, mysteries that will bring success to your life, mysteries that will take you to be above only and not beneath. It comes from a place of knowledge. Abraham knew God and it was credited to him for righteousness. He was even called a friend of God. That is deep and intimate relationship with God. And that is what God is asking from us. So he said in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, he said that I look at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, he told Samuel the prophet, go anoint me a king in the house of Jesse. 
And when he went, Samuel saw Eliab. He said, this must be him. Then he saw all the children of Jesse. But God said, I've rejected them all. The king I am wanting is not here. He said, because the Lord looks not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. None of them had a heart that was conditioned towards God. And because of that, God said, no, my king is not amongst them. Don't look at his height and his stature. Don't look at the fact that he is well built. He's tall. He's handsome. Don't look at that. He doesn't have a heart for me. So your heart must be conditioned for God. Your heart must be conditioned because with our ears we listen, but with our heart we hear. And if you want to hear God, you must have an intimate knowledge of God. You must have an intimate knowledge of God. And it comes from a place of love. And when you know God, you love God. And when you love God, you have a relationship that is conditioned to put him first. He becomes priority in your life. Like Joseph, he says, how can I do this wicked thing to my God? When Potiphar's wife was presenting him herself, you know, wanting to what, you know, sleep with him. He said, no, I cannot do that because this, whatever I do here is against God because everything he did, he did it as unto God and not unto man. So my brother and my sister, I want to encourage you. Let your heart be conditioned and be in a posture of love towards God. And when you do that, you begin to have deep and intimate relationship with God. You begin to have a close walk with God. And when you have a close walk with God, God reveals mysteries, secrets to you, secrets that will bless you, instructions, direction, and guidance that will take you to the next level. Amen? Amen? So, my brother and my sister, you under the sound of my voice, have a deeper walk with God. But you that don't have a relationship with this God, I want to invite you to an authentic one-on-one relationship where you believe with your heart and you make a confession with your mouth Please repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life and my will unto you. I confess of my sins and I repent of them. I ask you, show me mercy and forgive me. From today, come and sit at the throne of my heart as my Lord and rule over my life as my Savior. Amen. If you have made that declaration, I welcome you into the kingdom of God. The next thing you want to do, you want to get yourself a Bible and look for a Bible-believing church where they will disciple you to know God and to love God. And when you know God and love God, every other thing shall begin to chase you. He says, you shall first look out to know God. Then all other things will be added unto you. As for us, Open Way Church, we are virtual. You can check us out on Facebook and on YouTube. On Facebook is Open Way Church Bridgeland. And on Facebook is just Open Way Church. Please, as you do so, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so that you are alerted every time we come on live. Amen. We love you, but Jesus loves you more. Shalom. I'll be with you next week. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by support of listeners like you. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner or making a one-time donation? Your support helps us continue providing these teachings to minister, encourage, and bless the body of Christ across the landscape of this great nation and nations all over the world. To donate or to learn more, please visit www.openwaychurch.com. You can also join us for Bedtime Prayer Fellowship every Monday and Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. through 8.45 p.m., streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, www.facebook.com slash openwaychurchbridgeland or www.youtube.com slash openwaychurch. 
Our prayer for you is that your faith grows stronger and your walk with God grows deeper because there's victory in Jesus Christ.